Welcome to another video for servers and IT distribution r and Terramoster was kind enough to send us a review unit of the latest M.2 NAS, the F8 SSD+. Plus. However, we got our review unit a little bit later than usual, so we actually had to make this video a little bit quicker, because it's going on release on the 18th of September. Uh, so this has already been unboxed once, so there's a few things that we already took out of the box, but we will try to highlight it for you. The first thing that you will see is a welcoming letter, a small discount coupon for $100 off of the first 100 people who buy, the user manual, some nice padding, and you can ignore the worse than digital one terabyte over there. Yeah, uh, but basically this is... Um, where the NAS was when you unboxed it. Um, inside uh, the package you will also find a few accessories. In the accessory box there was an Ethernet cable, a CAT6 cable. We already took that one out because um, we unboxed it earlier. Um, there was also the power adapter and the power cord. And this uh, white plastic there was the one that covering the NAS. There is also two uh, M.2 uh, extra screws and of course the heat sinks for the M.2s. Now this is a re review sample so this might actually be a little bit different from what you get out uh, in retail because we found an issue with the heat sinks and that is that they are currently attached with rubber bands and the rubber bands broke for us uh, at a few times actually so we couldn't put them on. So uh, this might be changed from, you know, when you get it out in the box. They, they probably will have changed this. They will have changed probably to a sled or something. Something will probably be changed. Um, but yeah, that's basically what comes into the box. Uh, this is a very small form factor NAS. So let's take a deeper look at it. Over here, you will see that this is the NAS. As you can see, it's very tiny, very tiny and it has a very good price point and it looks pretty nice uh, it's well designed easy on the eyes starting from the top to the bottom you're going to be having three usb uh, ports 10 gigabits one usb c two usb a's one 10 gigabit ethernet one hdmi one power supply and one thumb screw in order to open the NAS, you just unscrew the thumbscrew, you don't need any tools. And once you have unscrewed the thumbscrew, you basically just push from the bottom and the NAS will come out by itself. The NAS has an 8 bay uh, slot, so you can fit 8 M.2s inside of it. It comes with 16 gigabit DDR5 by default. And as you can see, it's pretty neat and pretty tiny. There in the back is the heat sink for the CPU, and that's about it. After that, you just slide it back in, and you just screw the screw back. In the top, you have the venting holes, and in the bottom, you have the fan holes. Now, there is a few things we're going to be talking about uh, regarding those, but we'll, it will be a little bit later in the video. As I briefly explained in the beginning of the video, uh, Terramoster was kind enough to send us this review unit. However, it's going on release on the 18th of September. So this video is, we're, we're trying to do this one as good, best as we can, but it's going to be a little bit uh, faster than usual. But we will try to cover as much as we can. Now, the F8 SSD Plus is a very small form factor NAS, as you can see on the picture in front of you. Um, it can basically fit in the size of your hand. Uh, it features M.2 only interfaces. It has eight slots for M.2s, supporting up to eight terabyte per uh, slot. It has one 10 gigabit ethernet uh, port. It has 4K hardware decoding, 16 gigabytes of DDR5, 32 executional units on the GPU, 8 threads and 8 cores on the Intel Core i3 N305 processor. Now, this review, we're going to go over a few things about this NAS. Now, this NAS is very good for high IOPS um, 
usages, like 71 to 90,000 IOPS. And it's extremely good at video editing. This video here, for example, is being edited on this NAS. However, it does have a few flaws. It's a very good NAS and it has a good price par point. Yeah, you'll be very hard challenged to be able to build something like this uh, for the amount of money they're asking for it. So price point, it's good, but they could maybe have done a few things differently. And let me explain to you why. So if we come to the CPU and everything, it looks very good. It's no problems at all. And uh, the only issue that you will have is dust. As you can see here on this picture, it drags in air from the bottom and expels in the top. The top has no dust filter and it's a dust magnet. So basically dust will be gathering there. This is a problem because as we all know, dust is the enemy of all uh, computers. There should be a dust filter there or, or like um, a dust canal or something. Like you could 3D print something to put on there and you know cover up that area and you know make it blow the other way it should have been you know some sort of filter there yeah now the next thing that we're going to uh, go address and this is another flaw that i think this nas has and that is in uh, if we look at the back picture here you go here's the back picture so as you can see here, there's three 10 gigabits USB ports, three 10 gigabits. Now the first one is for the D8 expansion unit, which is logical. However, these two, um, I would recommend that they remove one of them if possible. Remove one of them and add another 10 gigabit of ethernet or two five gigabits or to 2.5 gigabits if possible because one 10 gigabit of ethernet is not enough it is not enough because this nas will eat through it the nas is too powerful for the ethernet that is provided so the nas itself is too powerful um, you have the HDMI for the terminal and then you have the power and the reason for the uh, external power supply is very simple and that is because the heat M.2s generate a lot of heat and therefore if you had the power supply inside the NAS it would be even more heat. This here uh, in the bottom is a thumb screw uh, and uh, it's very easy you don't need any tools you would just use the thumb screw and it pops up. Um, and there's the reset button over there. But as I said, yeah, so one Ethernet port is not enough. Um, and um, that is a shame, actually, because the customer needs now to go out and buy two uh, 5 gigabit of Ethernet uh, network NICs to put into the USB ports in order to get more um, Ethernet. If you add two 5 gigabit uh, ethernet ports or one more 10 gigabit of ethernet port then you actually have enough throughput to handle the hardware so you just needed that extra ethernet yeah as for the d8 as you can see here on this picture you can add the d8 to the nas that brings us to another thing this is the f8 ssd plus so this is the more advanced version why they added 16 gigabytes instead of 32 is something that I will question because if you look at their other pro versions um, they have 32 gigs and they are selling really well it's a very extremely good NAS I would recommend they add 32 gigabytes to this because 16 is good but it's not enough it is not enough 32 gigs would be better because you're going to be adding this storage um, over here you're gonna be adding this storage and every time you add a storage uh, storage pool the RAM gets used up so 
you need more RAM because otherwise you're going to be running Docker, you're going to be running virtual machines. Uh, if you look down here, you can see uh, here, for example, is how they uh, how you just drag out the NVMEs and stuff like that. But if you look here, virtualization tools for facilitate for every project. I'm going to show you Windows 11 running on this NAS. However, if you are going to be running virtualization, your memory is going to be tapped. So 32 should be there. Next up, we have the TOS 6. TOS 6 comes uh, by standard default on this unit. Now, this review unit that I have been sent is running probably the beta version. I am not sure. But just so you know, TOS 6 is not officially released yet. Just so you know. So this review unit has TOS 6 by default, but as I said, it's not yet fully released. Um, next up is um, basically the standard things for Terra Monster. They have a lot of good things. They have the Terra Sync, they have everything like this. There is a few things that we're gonna be discussing in the TOS 6 review when we actually go into the NAS. They are doing a few things very good. They are, for example, explaining how you should use it and in what situation you should be using what. That is very good. TerraMonster has done a very good job at trying to explain the best ways for you to use the NAS that you have bought. And they are working hard on that fact. And that is a good thing because not everyone knows what to use their NAS and what it can, what, what's it capable of. And uh, here, for example, you can see that it's, you can use basically any file system on it. Um, you have the T-RAID and the T-RAID Plus. And here, as, as I said before, it's, it's used for video editing and it's doing a very good job at it. It's a, doing a very good job. So if you have a video editing studio, the F8 SSD Plus is highly recommended because it is capable of handling that pressure without any issues. And especially for the price point. I mean, they are, it's actually very cheap. The F8 SSD Plus is actually very cheap. So anyways, let's go over a few specifications. Most of this is going to be general stuff because Terra Monster usually has the same stuff on everything, but there's a few things here that stands out. So the first thing up, you have the Intel i3 N305 processor. It's very good. Uh, you will actually see that when we're running in the Windows 11 machine. Um, and here we go. So it comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR5, but you can upgrade to 32. In my honest opinion, it should come with 32 by default because you're gonna need it <laughs> you're gonna need it um, you have 8 terabyte times 8 so that is a maximum of 64 and you can expand that with the d8 and so on and so forth and here you go you have the three usb ports i'd i'd honestly recommend that they take one of them away and add more networks um and um, as for the wattage um, it says that it's 45 fully loaded, and that is actually very correct. Um, the NAS that I currently have and I'm testing is around 42, around 42 watts. Idle, 9 watts. I'm actually a little bit lower, so I'm around like 8, like around 8, so it's a little bit lower. Um, inside the box, we already have an unboxing of this NAS, but... Here you have the host unit, power cord, power adapter, the CAT6 cable, the quick installation guide, limited warranty, and two screws. Not a few. There's two. There's two screws. I would actually honestly like to see at least eight because imagine you're, you're like popping in a new one and one screw gets lost and you know, you only have two. So yeah. Anyways, you can always buy like Del Taco packages, so that's not an issue. And it comes with T-RAID and T-RAID Plus. And that is basically RAID 5 or RAID 6, basically. But T-RAID is also an adaptive RAID, so you can basically pop any type of size into it and it will take it and use it, which is a good thing, uh, especially when it comes to this, for example. Uh, finding 8 terabytes M.2s is not going to happen. It's too expensive, so 
people are going to pop in one gigabytes, two gigabytes, three gigabytes, and stuff like this. Um, yeah, um, here's a few TOS 6 features, by the way. RSI 2048 encryption, uh, OTP, Hyperlock, and uh, this is probably the new version of the Hyperlock, I think. This is the new version. Um, so, yeah, there you go. And the gallery. Now, there's been many reviews, because I got my review unit a little bit late. So, there's been a lot of uh, people already doing reviews on this. And where they're like disassembling it and you know pulling all out and stuff like this and um, well I have the unboxing video as well but it's really not much to see inside of it the outside is basically the most important things um, however the review unit has one thing I hope they fix before they sell the retail and that is the heat sinks I have already uh, discussed this with TerraMaster. Um, the heat sinks are currently being held down by rubber bands, and many other people doing the review has also found it a little bit. Um, it's an it's an issue because the rubber bands break, uh, and when they break, the 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 heat sinks will fall off. So I hope they make a better system to hold down the heat sinks. Um, I have actually uh, told TerraMaster to make a sled uh, to hold uh, the heat sinks, uh, but I don't know, maybe they will find a better way, because uh, rubber bands, not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Um, Alright, so let's head over to TUS 6 and we'll give you a brief go through there and, you know, we'll look over it. So, on the right side you will find the help menu to turn off the buzzer, notifications, and your dashboard for your system. Now, a few things that is new here in TOS 6 is you can actually move these around, so you, depending on how you want them. Um, you have an option to add uh, or remove certain items. And you have the overview like this. Here you can see all the applications currently running, how much are you using, and things like this. <clears throat> In the top left we have a start menu. This was over here before. And over here we had um, the system resource tab which has been changed. Over here we have the most used applications. Then you have all applications and then you have file manager this is the new file manager it's actually a lot better than before it's a lot better it's over there and here you have the application tab this is basically the same as when you go this way and you click all applications it's the same then you have the backup tab control panel app center docker manager and support and help now, war warranty, you get 24-7 uh, support from TerraMaster for two years. If you register, you get six additional months, and this is really good. And um, in the App Center, if, uh, I don't normally use the recommended one. I don't really know what that's for, to be honest. So just click everything. That will be what you need. So, as you can see, uh, a few of these are missing icons and stuff like this, but it's uploading. Now, this is the um, beta, TOS 6 beta, right? So, things will be changed uh, when it's fully released. Um, this is a re review sample. This is a review sample. So, be, be mindful that some things will be changed. Now, uh, over here we have everything that you pre pretty much need. You have TPS Backupper, Apache Cat, Area 2 Centralized. TerraMaster does a really good job at adding applications, um, especially applications that is useful. Yeah? For example, the Docker Engine. This is very useful. Uh, the Duples, that's pretty okay. You have the Joomla, Log Center, Multimedial, Nextcloud, PHP, Snapshot. 
surveillance manager. This is still in beta, I think. This is still in beta. Uh, TVFM backup, uh, Tina's backup for PC system. Terraphotos. Terraphotos is actually a very nice, nifty thing. Um, it will basically use AI to find objects and people, so you can identify them um, easy and sort your pictures. Uh, VPN, USB Kappa, USB copy, not copy. Uh, web, Docker Manager. Docker Manager here is really good. I actually use that a lot. Um, MB, don't really use that when I use Yellowfin, it's actually better. Icecassy, iTunes, Java, Virtual Machines, PHP, Plex, Transmission, QTorrent, VirtualBox, you're going to be using that a lot. I would actually recommend that one day, VirtualBox is a little bit out of date. It's a little bit out of date. If I could, I would urge TerraMaster to actually move to Kimu instead, because VirtualBox is... Uh, it's it's a little bit too old, a little bit too old. It's good, but it's too old. The reason why I'm saying it's too old is because it still has a few aspects to it that relies on um, uh, Adobe Flash, for example, which doesn't exist anymore, and you shouldn't use it for that matter. Uh, I would not use the WordPress here, because you can use a Docker container with WordPress that would be actually better. Here you have the community apps. I will not go in here because as you see here they warn you that there can be stuff here that you probably shouldn't have. But you have community apps where you can install things that other people have done. But uh, yeah. Um, one thing that I will share with you is on the backup tab. This is a new thing. This is a new thing. Um, this is the new backup topology diagram that uh, TerraMaster has actually supplied a picture of, and it's a very good picture. Now, the reason I'm saying it's a very good picture is because people buy a NAS and they think, yes, this is my backup. But that's not true, because everything can fail, and even if you have a NAS, it can fail. So, what do you do? In order to actually have a proper backup, you actually have a NAS with your information, which backs up to another NAS. And this might actually sound a little bit ridiculous, but this is actually what you're supposed to do. People actually buy the NAS, but they don't buy the secondary NAS. And, well, when the NAS fails and something happens, they might lose data because they don't offload the data. Offloading the data to an off-site, local disaster recovery, or even a cloud recovery. You should do that. Because, as I said, a NAS is not a backup. NAS is a storage device. You need to have your data in two separate places. Otherwise, there is no redundancy. Because even if you have T-RAID or T-RAID Plus, it will allow one hard drive to fail, or it will allow two hard drives to fail. That is not redundancy. That is only redundancy on the drives, not on the data itself. So, what you do is exactly what TerraMaster here explains. Move it to an off-site disaster recovery, or a local disaster recovery. So basically, you, you mirror your information to another NAS. That is the correct way of doing things. And I actually like that they are showing this from TerraMaster, because this is something that everyone should know. Because there has been too many that had, has been contacting uh, support um, for other companies, uh, and they say, oh, I bought a Synology NAS, and it failed, and my data is gone. And... Then you, then you ask them, did you have a secondary NAS? And they say no. So I applaud TerraMaster for showing this because everyone should know this. And over here you have your scenarios. So here you can basically get like, how can I do this and how can I do this? And this is really good. This is extremely good. I really like that they are showing this uh, from TerraMaster. And this is great. This is absolutely fantastic. 
Over here you have the r -Syncs, the file system snapshots, time machines, centralized backups, duples, TerraSync, CloudSync, snapshots, USB copy, and TFM backup. So this backup tab over here, it's really good. I suggest you use it. Now there's one more thing that I would like to show you. That's the Docker Manager. This is the Docker Manager. The Docker Manager is kind of like a very small pertainer. And it's absolutely fantastic. I wish they would update this to have more network uh, connection types and stuff like this. Um, but this is fantastic. So what you do is you install Portainer through SSH and then you use the Docker Manager to hook up into the Portainer and you can use them both to work together. And here you get an absolutely beautiful oversight of everything that is happening on your NAS, how many Docker containers, what you're doing, how things is working out. Everything here will be displayed. This is really good. This is absolutely fantastic. Now there's one thing that I miss in TOS 6 and I have requested this from TerraMaster and that is over here in the top I would like to have an SSH window. So you can click on the window and SSH into the NAS from this web browser. The reason I requested this is because when you're doing things with Portainer and you're doing things with Docker, you sometimes need to do things with the command line. And the easiest way, instead of having to SSH into the NAS and stuff like this, is to just have a button where you click and you SSH into the system and you can go from there. And if you look on Ubiquity and how they do it, they already have this. They have had it for many, many, many years. QNAP has had it. Some of the Synology has it. So I would urge TerraMaster to make this SSH button over here and uh, just so you can remote into the system from the web browser. But yeah, this basically concludes everything that you probably need to see or actually have to see that is regarding TOS 6. It's basically an updated TOS 5. Now, as I said before, this is the beta version. So things are going to change. Things are going to change. Um, but yeah, this is it. And I hope you enjoy. So here we're currently running uh, the virtual machine with Windows 11 on the F8 SSD Plus. So if we take a look here, you will see that we have Windows 11. And if we take a look over here, and we go to System, scroll down, Device, you will see that it's using the CPU of the NAS itself. It has 8 gigs of RAMs and everything. Now, as you can see, this works pretty much flawless. The only problem that I ran into was um, the sound seems to be not working in RDP. Um, it might work in tight VNC or something like that, but in RDP, no, not so much. But you can probably do other things. As for hardware acceleration, we have uh, 2D acceleration, not 3D acceleration. And that is not because of a problem with the NAS itself. It is a problem with how VirtualBox is installed. VirtualBox does support uh, 3D hardware acceleration, but not in the current way that it's installed um, on the NAS. So if you need 3D acceleration, you need to do a docker container and pass through the gpu uh, into that and then you have hardware acceleration anyways that's basically how you can run windows 11 on the f8 ssd plus so to conclude this f8 ssd plus review um would i recommend this nas yes i would i, I would recommend it because while the while the problems are minor and can be fixed and the ethernet problem for example you can fix that you can change the ram you can upgrade it um 
the heat sinks will probably be fixed before it is being sold to retailers so that is not a problem um i would recommend it i would recommend the nas because it's a small form factor it's portable you can use it in almost any scenario and if you have for example a company uh, a small company that has a home page for example that takes multiple hits at once um, it will be able to handle that pressure without any issues um, if you're doing video editing it's doing that no problems um, you can do pretty much anything you want with it and as it says here on the picture in the palm of your hand um, it's very hard to fault it like it's very hard if they fix the minor issues then this NAS is golden like it's golden I would highly recommend it I would I would now the next thing to conclude this review of the unit um, for the price point let's go down and check the price point so currently um, here you have the F8 SSD and the F8 SSD Plus. Um, the only difference here is the CPU. Um, so they are charging the early off price, which is limited to the 100 first customers, I think. It's $500 for the F8 SSD. It is $700 for the F8 SSD Plus. And for that price, if you're looking for a NAS, you're in the video editing industry, you'd be a fool not to buy it. Uh, because it's it's good and it's useful. Um, you can put it in your bags, you can take it with you, you can move around with it. Um, content creation, uh, it's so much you can do with it, so much. Um, I just hope they fix the minor issues before the release. Um, it's supposed to release in the 18th of September. Might be a little bit hard to fix everything, but maybe I don't know. It depends uh, how they how they do. If they ship out on the 18th of September, then maybe it's going to be difficult to fix the issue. Maybe they will retroactively fix the issues later. I don't know, uh, but um, yeah, it's a good NAS anyway. So, to end this video, let's go over a few things. The first is the 2024 fall new product lineup. So this is globally available on September 9, 2024 by TerraMaster. This is their new product lines. Um, and I think that this uh, date is also the date when TOS 6 comes out of beta. I'm not sure, but I think that's the way, at least looking from here, that, that's the way I think so. Um, because it would be kind of odd that the, uh, they launches the NAS with the beta uh, operational system on it, but uh, we'll see. Um, so here is a few of their new NASs, um, the F4 424 Max, the F6 424 Max, and the F6 424, and these are, I think this might be an error, 10 core, 12 threads, that, that must be an error, I think, maybe, I don't, I don't know, it seems a little bit odd, but um, yeah, and then they have the all-in-one backup server. Uh, they have the T9500 Pro, the T12500 Pro. Um, they're going to be beastly units, I can tell you that, straight from the get-go. They're going to be really powerful. Um, then they have the U8500 Plus and the U12500 Plus. These are rack-mounted NASs. Uh, it's pretty much the same hardware, I think. Yeah, pretty much the same hardware. So, let's take a look here. As mentioned before, you have the F8, the F8 SSD Plus, 599, 799, 799. Then you have the F6 424, and it's uh, using the N95 processor. It's going to be sitting at around $600, um, $500 with the early uh, bird price with the first 100 customers. Um, 
it's a very good sizable mass. Um, I have, I actually have one of those. I actually have one of those. Um, I have the T6423, which is basically the same NAS, but um, made of metal. And this is made of a little bit of hardened plastic. Um, and it's very good, very good. Then you have the F4424 Max. Now, this is a little bit of something that is a problem for me. They say Max, but it only has 8 gigabytes of DDR5 that 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 can't be right like that no that can't be right like i understand why they say max maybe it's because of the cpu or something but eight gigabytes of ram that's too little that's too little um 16 that would be minimum 16 would be minimum then you have the f6 424 max um 999 um the same thing here. Uh, you have eight gigabytes. I I don't understand why. I would really not recommend this. Uh, the the, um, the low amount of RAM usages that they show here is um, it's a little bit odd. I have to say it's a little bit odd. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's the cost. Maybe it's the cost like the the RAM sticks cost too much or something. I don't know. I have to ask Terramaster about that later, but I, I find it odd that they say F6424 Max and then they just put 8 gigabytes there. This might not be the final solution, you know. Um, this maybe is an error, I don't know, but it's weird. Then you have the T9500 Pro, and as you can see, it comes with 16 gigabytes out of the box. This is good. Uh, this is a good processor. Uh, everything is really nice. You got two uh, 10 gigabits of Ethernet, as I explained before. The F8 SSD Plus, if that had two 10 gigabits of Ethernet, oh Jesus, that would be really good. But here we go. So this one, the T9500 Pro has two. The T12500, same thing there, 16 gigabytes and two 10 gigabytes. Yeah, pretty good. You have the U8, pretty much the same thing, and you have the U12, pretty much the same thing. So the only thing that I would complain about here is that these units here has only 8. I understand that the normal one has 8, but why these ones? Why these ones have 8 and not 16, I don't understand. Anyways, this is the lineup for 2024. This might be an error, this might be corrected. But yeah, um, it's a very powerful lineup and it features the 10 gigabit ethernet scene in spades. Um, and um, this is uh, going to make a dent in the NAS industry because Terramaster is currently pushing away the competition. Synology is going their closed uh, way where they, they they force you to have only Synology, Synology M.2s, Synology mechanical drives, Synology this, Synology that. You're you're they're locking down their customers. Then you have QNAP. Um, they are basically saying we only go for enterprise. We we don't care about the normal people, and you know that's that's their thing. You know. Then you have Terra Monster coming in, and Terra Monster is what I would like to say the brand for the people. The brand for openness, because Terramaster's NASes are not locked down. You can install anything you want on them. You can do pretty much anything you wish. Um, nothing is locked down uh, on the Terramaster NAS. So you do, you're not forced to use a special disk. You're not forced to do anything special. Um, I, I really like that. I really like that. Open society, open rules. I like that because it gives you the freedom, the freedom to customize your unit the way that you want it to be used. I really like that. Anyways, there you go. This is the lineup for 2024 Terramaster. And this concludes the review of the F8 SSD Plus. And my, basically my verdict is You'd be a fool not to buy it.
especially if you're in video editing industry or content creation or something, you're on the move and you need storage solution. This is the way to go. Um, it's small, portable and affordable. Thank you very much and hope you have a lovely day.